Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Fish in the 509. I'm trying to get situated here on the boat. I just got here and uh, I had a couple hours to get out and come fish, so that's the plan. To be honest, I don't really know what I'm gonna go for today. We're gonna get turned around, headed another direction. I'm excited to show you guys is my fish finder setup that I finally got on my uh, on my boat. I really didn't want to drill anything into the boat and so I fixated my transducer on the back of a, a C, this is called a C clamp, um, transducer on the back of it. I just stick this to the back of my boat and I got my transducer and it's battery fed through a little 12 volt battery. All you do is clamp it on like so. Just trying to get out of these weeds and that clamp's pretty strong so I'm not too worried about it getting pulled off. Here I got the battery. And I just, I kind of just uh, worked a GoPro um, clamp to hold my screen up. So you'll see what that looks like in just a second. Fully adjustable. I can move this thing wherever I want to move it. I can clamp it here, I can clamp it here, but it's worked out really well for me back here. So I can work the trolling motor and I got the fish finder right here. So let's get this thing turned on. Most of the time, these arches mean fish. So. If I stay here and, and drop down, I'm gonna see if there's anything. So, I did go and buy some worms. I usually never fish with worms unless I come out for panfish, because you're pretty guaranteed to catch them. You can use plastics, but, like I said, with these worms, you're gonna, you're gonna just slay. So when that bait's in the water, that presentation's wiggly like that, it gives its, its own action. I'm looking at it here to see if I see anything. I mean, that, that line could be something following me at about 15 feet. All right, so it looks like we have arches, a lot of arches right there down underneath the boat. A lot of movement down there. So dropping my lure straight down. Once it gets down to the bottom, just sitting there, letting it jig, something's on it. Got one. Look at this tiny small mouth. Thanks for letting me catch you, buddy. It's amazing. Drop this guy down here. There's my bait falling down 10 feet. Something's chasing it down. Right here, we're at 20 feet. If you can see my bait, constant drop. Stuff is checking it out. There's one. Oh no, he came off. He dang, he came off. So again, you could see right here, here's my bait falling. Things came off the bottom for it, hit it, missed it. I'm gonna set this freaking drag a little tighter. There we go. Now we got one. What is it? So what we got? Beautiful color on this guy. You little stinky. I'm gonna let you go the sooner you stop acting crazy. Second catch. Bluegill. See, buddy. There's another one. Probably another bluegill. Actually, no. That was a perch. There's one. Holy smokes, dude. That guy almost pulled the dang rod out of my hands. Perch. Get him out. Back in. There's another one. All right, man. Get this guy proper release. I'm gonna leave my rod here. You guys watch it for me while I get this anchor figured out. Didn't let me know I had one, man. Another perchy, man. We almost lost him. I want you guys to just get a feel for what the bite looks like. There's one, there's a hit. He's probably on there, so we're gonna set the hook, set it, and then you could reel him in. Let's not lose this guy. 
What is it? Another perch. There's another perch. I think a little bigger than the last one. It's a nice little perch right there. Check them out. Hey, buddy. There's one. Not very big. Why is there zero drag on this thing? Keep the pressure on the fish. And we got a perch. Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks for getting your slime all over my camera. See yeah. you, man. There's one. Let's see what's down there at 27 feet, causing a disturbance. What is it, a perch? Doesn't feel very big. Oh, oh my gosh, that was a really big perch right behind this one. All right, dude, there he is. If you look, that fish shot back down. Now he's hanging back down there again. Let's get this guy back in the water. See if we cannot get what was chasing that perch. Dude, that was a nice perch. There's one. Is it him? It's actually got a better fight to it. What is it? Oh yeah, this is a nice perch here. Probably not the biggest, but that's a good sized perch. Probably one of the, look at that perch, man. That's a quality fish. Okay, so I think this is gonna be the size that I uh, keep, so sorry little buddy. Something decent. Whatever it is, it's probably bigger than the majority of what I caught, unless it just feels that way. Oh yeah, it's a catfish, dude. Gross. Look at this. Catfish right here, it's a fat catfish. Always be careful when handling these dudes uh, because they have these, you hear that guy, he's barking. Hear him? <laughs> um, they have these super sharp um, barbs right here on both sides. So when you handle them, be careful because they will stab you. Look at this guy. Look at that little belly on there, dude. <laughs> All right, buddy. Get you back in. See you, man. All right. So the same situation if you're on a dock, you're standing over the edge, drop your bait straight down, watch your line. Once it stops moving, kind of feed it through. Sometimes it gets stuck. You know you're pretty much at the bottom. Tighten it up, reel it up just a couple inches off the bottom, and just wait. The bites will come. Watch that tip. Feel for vibrations in your hands. There's a hit, aggressive hit, super aggressive hit. Pull it back out. Check, oh, you could see all those fish. You see that, dude? That guy hit it. There was like a school of perch right there. Got something, got some size on it. What is it? Trout, got a trout. Oh, nice. It's a good size trout too. Don't go into the boat. Oh, he's going under the boat. Apply that pressure. There he is. Beautiful, beautiful rainbow trout. Hopefully we could land him. He's going pretty crazy. Oh, we got him in the boat. Check that beauty out. Always be a little careful with these fish. You get some water on your hands. They are very sensitive. So we got them and we're gonna let them go. But let's just take a look at this guy. A beautiful rainbow trout. Check them out. Man, that's a beautiful fish. Look at that color on them. Look at that glisten, but we're gonna let them go. Oh no, this could be bad. Oh, he's gone. Oh. Another one, little perch. All right, we're gonna just end it right there on that trout and that perch. Hey, what's up guys? And uh, welcome to my first catch and cook. I'm not a big fish eater, so I don't do these very often but I know they're pretty popular right now, so I wanted to try it. We're gonna give this a shot. Freshly caught perch. 
and uh, he's already been cleaned and bled so um, for the most part he's done Let's work on cutting this guy and getting some fillets off of him we got him only knife I brought I guess I could have prepared a, a lot better than I did we're gonna cut just behind the gill plate bring the knife back right along the spine gonna cut right along the back of that fish knife through well I got my two perch fillets right here um, I mean if you can call them a fillet <laughs> I'm gonna rinse them off here in this water oh I lost one I lost one I got it all right cleaning that filleted them the best I could Gonna give them back to mother nature. So, we are going to, is that blurry or is it just me? There is a fire extinguisher on board. You can hear the, the gas coming out. We got some waterproof matches. We're gonna try to ignite this guy. We got some fire. We got our pan gonna heat this guy up and we got our perch fillets we're gonna be using butter and oh man these tortillas broke and a broken tortilla throw it in there like that there we go tortilla is done now we're gonna take a knob of butter we're gonna just pinch it right off into the pan butter on this and okay, cool this down just a little bit might be a little too hot all right throw in our fillets skin side down and you can see that fish just frying up crisping up on uh, on the other side you can see the meat turning white right in front of you take a look at that the difference between the cooked meat right here and the white meat you got that meat that's still a little gooey. Um, I'm just gonna continue cooking this. Flip it. So let's try this. Gonna flip this. Gonna flip it over. That skin's got a nice caramelization. We're letting that butter just do work. We're not gonna eat the skin, we're just gonna pick off um, some of that cooked meat. But I might have had the heat on just a little too high. And that butter is probably burning just a little bit too much. So I'm going to flip it back over because that piece already got a decent little fry on there. Off on a plate. I'm going to just break apart this meat. Take a look at that. It's still really hot, but that meat's just coming right off. There we go. Ooh, that's hot. I made a fish taco out of this. So I'm gonna try it out and give my honest, honest feedback on it. So let's try this out. To be honest, bone. I mean, if I had salt, I think this would be 10 times better. But I mean, that was actually really good. It kind of has like a, a shrimpy taste to it, but it's not as powerful as shrimp. And that tasted just like a shrimp taco. Pretty good. Wasn't bad. I was a little nervous about, about trying it because I don't really like fish, but that actually was not bad. Pretty decent, dude. I was nervous about cutting the fish up because obviously, clearly, I didn't know what I was doing. But besides that, I'm just not a big fish eater. It was nice to try it out, and it turned out not to be bad. I mean, every once in a while, I don't think a fish taco is gonna hurt anyone, you know what I mean? So, maybe next time I'll do it a little bit fancier, get some salt. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for everything else. I'll see you guys on the next one.